Welcome to the Swine Health Black Belt Podcast, the latest swine health research digested for you. My name is Dr. Clayton Johnson. I'm the host of the podcast. And joining me in our podcast studios this week is Dr. Henry Osameke. Dr. Osameke is a postdoc at Iowa State University in the Department of Veterinary Diagnostic and Production Animal Medicine. Uh, Dr. Osameke is a veteran of the podcast coming back to join us for a second time. Uh, so for those of you who haven't already heard Dr. Osameke's first podcast, please go check out Henry for a previous episode. Uh, Henry, uh, really appreciate you coming back on. Let's start with a little introduction. Um, who are you and, and what's uh, what's your background? All right. Thanks, Clayton. So like I said, my name is Henry uh, Osameke. The full name is Unyeka Chuku Henry Osameke, and, and I'm a vet. I'm from uh, Nigeria, Nigeria is in West Africa. Um, I got my DVM in 2014, um, did a little of clinical practice. Then in 2017, I joined the um, federal government service as a senior veterinary research officer and uh, worked on a couple of pathogens. One of the studies or projects I was on was the um, ASF resist. And that uh, was somewhere sometime in 2019. And uh, so much towards the end of the project, I was picked by Dr. Linares. I applied into the program. So I joined the field epi team in the spring of 2020 uh, in the dual uh, graduate program. And I've gone on to have my master's and I just recently completed my PhD. Ah, congratulations. Excellent, Henry. I um, mean, you know, your you. team uh, has, has continued to put out excellent research um, and excellent researchers into the field. Uh, you've worked, Henry, a lot on diagnostic surveillance. And you're here today to talk to us a little bit about uh, wean pig testing specific to PERS. Um, certainly, we know that PERS is an important pathogen, but why do producers and veterinarians have such interest in optimizing their testing, their surveillance for wean pigs for PERS? All right. So um, there are a few reasons why the, the weaning age pigs would be a risk-based population. As we know, um, PERS clusters by space and also by subpopulation. So um, one of the reasons is that by the time this pig is about to be weaned, the cholesterol antibodies they had uh, gotten around time of birth would have weaned at about the time they are about to be weaned. So they are the most susceptible population um, um, to PERS, right? And compared to the other pigs within the, 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 uh, within the breeding herd, they have stayed the longest, right? So there's an increased chance that if this person they heard, this subpopulation would have encountered um, 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 PERS. Um, another key reason um, why this subpopulation would need to be sampled is they are the final product from your farm, right? Uh, they would be probably the best subpopulation to appraise um, how the farm is fair in PERS-wise. Um, epidemiologically, they sometimes would have to leave the site to some other site, right? So it's really important you know what the status of these peaks are. And there have been a couple of studies that say, hey, the even if you are sampled at processing, you do not expect that that result would be the same as the as the um as the result at winning, right? Even if it's the same the same set of piglets or comparing a younger set of piglets, right? So it's important that you understand what the status um, of this, of this, um, these pigs are very good. Traditionally, Henry, what, uh, uh, what have producers done? What do you consider to be the gold standard of assessing that population? Well, um, uh, at least in the, in the U S wine industry today, um, serum sample is the, is the industry accepted, uh, diagnostic sample, right? Mm -hmm. so at least you see that with the, with the ASV, um, uh, um, first classification for breeding herds is the serum bet. sample. Yeah, there's been um, some studies um, by um, Marcelo Almeida here um, at Iowa State. And I, th I think um, even with uh, keto one rats showing that um, aura fluids, right, from pigs about to be weaned are uh, um, a good sample for assessing the purse um, status of herds, right? So those probably would be um, two samples that are also in the ASV, at least the modified version of the ASV um, 
press classification for breeding herds. But we see what we see in the swine disease reporting system is some herds also, uh, or some uh, practitioners also send in swab samples, right? So um, different kinds of swab samples, oral swab samples, nasal swab samples, and um, yevin blood swab, um, yevin blood swab samples. So we see all of this uh, being submitted to veterinary diagnostic lab um, laboratories for PERS um, RT-QPCR. And Henry, as I understand it, you've recently completed some work looking at alternative samples and yeah. trying to understand how effective they are. You know, what's their sensitivity? Uh, how practical is it to collect and submit them compared to the gold standards of serum? You want to talk a little bit about the uh, alternative samples you've looked at and some of the pros and cons of them compared to that gold standard of serum? Yeah, sure. So um, <clears throat> um, we assessed just because, and mainly because these samples are being submitted um, to the to, um, to veterinary diag diagnostic labs, we assessed the ear vein blood swabs, the nasal swabs, and the oral swab at the level of individual piglets compared to serum samples. Um, uh, that was uh, what we did. Uh, all those were the samples that, that were assessed, at least in the last study, specifically for winning age pigs. What, uh, uh, what have you come to find in terms of what's most practical for the farm to collect and I guess the best overall value proposition? I know I'm putting you on the spot here a little bit, Henry, <laughs> but if this was the, the Henry Osameki uh, pig farm and we were going to try to use the wean pigs as our assessment of per status, what would be the samples that you would want your farm to collect? Yeah, so that would depend on the question we want to answer, right? Um, also, that would depend on, on uh, if we want to test multiple agents. Uh, that would also depend on budgets, right? Um, as, as you may already know, aggregate samples are, when it comes to cost and convenience, it's, it's hard to beat them, right? So if we, um, especially if it's low prevalence, if persons are low prevalence, maybe I want to go more the routes of aggregate samples like family or fluids, mm -hmm. right? Uh, but you, we, we, we know that there are limitations with aggregate sampling. Um, for example, if the question we want to answer is, was the prevalence of herd of purse within my within the herd? We probably want to go for for individual samples, right? Yep. And yep. Yeah. And and or if we want to um, find get samples for maybe advanced molecular diagnostics, maybe sequencing, maybe we would go for the uh, more the the individual um, PDF samples, right? And. Uh, which of the individual piglet samples I would use also would depend on lower factors. Uh, but I guess what would be relevant is, is that um, from the studies we did, uh, the recent study uh, we completed, uh, wanting to ensure that the positivity rates, um, the RTKPCR positivity rates in the swab samples um, were lower than the detection rates in serum, right? So this yeah. is very useful data, right? Um, yep. For example, the rule of thumb, in some sense, that's being used is if you had, if we assume that purse is at a ten percent prevalence, um, and uh, we we uh, we want to be able to detect at least one anim one animal at ninety five percent confidence, right? The industry already knows that. Hey, you probably want to sample thirty animals, right? And that's with serum. We we are assuming an almost uh, perfect. Um, test like if this animal is truly positive if we test this it, it's going to be positive um what's the results from this study we just did um showing that the swab samples are not as sensitive as serum is if you want to do the same thing with the alternative sample types for whatever reason uh if it's cost um convenience uh for whatever reason it is going to be you have to sample more animals right <music> Lasonia infection poses a major threat to pig gut health, negatively impacting performance and the ability to fend off other pathogens. Fight Lasonia at the site of infection with Enterosol ileitis from Behringer Ingelheim, a convenient oral vaccine that stimulates a direct immune response. Talk to your Behringer Ingelheim representative to learn more. United Animal Health has been innovating nutrition that feeds the animals that feed the world since 1956. 
Now a multinational ag biosciences company, we help people impact the health of their animals with less labor, less variation, less drag, less challenge, and less natural resources. Learn more at unitedanh.com. Excellent. Tremendous information, Henry. I really appreciate you taking time to come on the podcast here again. Glad that we didn't scare you off with the first experience, and I hope that uh, <laughs> we, can, we can bring you on for round two here in the future. Or pardon me, round three here in the future. Sure, sure. Uh, I would always be happy to, to uh, share useful information. Very good. Well, you certainly got a lot of that to share. Thanks for coming on the show, Henry, and, and to the audience. Thanks for listening to the Swine Health Black Belt Podcast. Please visit us at swinehealthblackbelt.com. And don't forget to subscribe to the podcast so that you don't miss out on our next episode next week. Thanks very much for joining us and have a great rest of your day. Hey, everyone. We're always searching for the latest and greatest research to share each week. If you have a swine health related research trial and would like to come on the show to talk about it with me and share it with our audience, feel free to send an email to healthblackbelt at swineit.com and we would love to take a look at your research.